Hey guys, let's talk a little bit about basic leather working tools for those of you that want to just are just getting started in leather. Um, my new shop is not as spacious as my old shop since we moved a while back and so I don't have those nice top-down cameras anymore. I haven't figured out a good way to do that so we're going to try this side camera kind of wonky angle thing and hope for the best. Sorry about that. Um, and you could just see my hands and uh, anyway so I wanted to just do this here and uh, talk about a few of the tools that I think are kind of essential for getting started the tools that I probably use 90 percent of the time um, and maybe down the road we'll do a more advanced tools video um, but we'll, we'll get this one started for now and hopefully this helps somebody out so um, let's see where should we start all right, so to start, I think what we'll use or talk about is you need a good solid surface to work on. This is my sewing machine table. This isn't what I work on generally. Um, I have a solid wood table with a, with a butcher block kind of top on it. And then I also have a piece of uh, marble or granite on top of that for tooling and that sort of thing. But you want a good solid base because when you're pounding on things, you don't want any bounce and rebound for when you're setting snaps or doing tooling or whatever. You need a good solid base so um, even one of those kitchen you know standalone carts with the butcher block top on it that's plenty good enough um, you don't need a giant fancy table at all in fact my table is not huge um, when I cut whole hides and stuff I, I just do it on the floor with a big cutting mat um, but you just need a reasonable size table you know that's heavy duty and that sort of thing so um, so that's number one and then I use these plastic cutting boards on top that you can get at Walmart or wherever um, these things like you go through them pretty quick they're good for cutting and stamping and all that stuff so you don't beat up your table here's one that's obviously seen better days um, I still use this one for punching holes and that kind of thing but they do get beat up pretty quick um, and you don't want to ruin your table so definitely get some of these plastic cutting boards I think they work fantastic from there let's talk about cutting so you can use scissors shears um, you can use a utility knife which is my preference most of the time um, there's other fancier kind of leather work specific knives out there on the market and things like that um, the, the half round kind of head knives that kind of thing um, you know use whatever makes you happy but these kind of things here you know you go to harbor freight or something like that it's a few dollars and the blades are replaceable so you don't have to sit there and sharpen them one thing I do on these you know you just get the replacement blades in a pack like this what I do with these blades first though is I strop them and that gets rid of any rough edges from manufacturing that sort of thing and it makes your blade last a lot longer it goes from one to two projects um, and being dull to lasting quite a few more than that and I strop it as I go also and that just keeps a little bit of an edge on it and you know um, it makes your blades just last longer and cut nicer and, and they're sharper um, this blade probably isn't particularly sharp right now but we're gonna make do straight edge a metal straight edge and I get the kind with the cork on the back so it doesn't scratch anything and so metal straight edges is, is to me essential for not only drawing and laying out your projects on paper and on the leather but also using a straight edge to cut along so yeah and you can see this knife is I've been using it for a few other things but it should go through on the first <laughs> the first cut and it's not oh my goodness <laughs> so there you go <laughs> The importance of a sharp knife. I'm going to flip this around to the other side. Let's see if that's any better. Yep, see one shot. So there you go, I have a nice straight edge now. So, and the importance of sharp blades live on camera. <laughs> um, okay, so cutting. You can use shears, um, but again, I kind of stick with this because it's flexibility, it's really easy to cut curves and that kind of thing. 
Um, some guys like the shears a lot. Um, I use these for specific things. Um, but again, it's a whole lot easier just to strop and change out blades on this than it is to sharpen a pair of scissors. So I'm just going for convenience, you know, and ease of use. I've gotten used to using the utility knife, and I'm I'm good with that. Um, trash can down there, another good thing to have. I use a five-gallon plastic bucket. Um, marking lines and stuff for stitching and that sort of thing. You want to get one of these. Um, there's a couple of different styles out there and they just have basically a little gouge on one end for cutting the leather and this is the guide for how far you want your stitching lines to be so and again all of this stuff I'm talking about is assuming you're doing projects kinda like me if you're making you know leather vests or leather underwear or something like that you might need a different set of tools um, but that's not my specialty so if you're doing belts and knife sheaths and wallets and things like that this is the stuff you want to get so these, once you get it adjusted to how far you want it, you just put the guide against the edge of the leather and push down a little bit. You can see that cuts a nice straight stitching line. So you could find these at most leather supply stores. I use typically Springfield Leather as a place I shop. Um, we'll talk about more, more about that at the end. Um, the next thing is marking your stitching. <clears throat> so you can use the the wheel. I don't know if you can see that because of the lighting. But this is basically a wheel that spins and it's just got little points on it. And you just put that where you want to mark your stitching points where you're going to put your holes. It marks it out for you. And you can use a fork, kitchen fork too, if you just want to poke a kitchen fork along there and mark those points where you're going to make those holes for stitching. Um, with leather you can't just push your needles through the leather you have to make the holes ahead of time um, you can so now my holes are marked now if you're using one of these you don't have to necessarily mark your holes um, this is a pricking iron and you're, it's already spaced out and they have kind of angled points on them so it makes your nice angled holes diamond shaped holes for you and you just whack those with your hammer as you go along. Um, there's similar ones like this that are bigger and these are for lacing. You know, lacing with leather uh, strap instead of stitching. Much bigger holes and they're straight. They're not angled or anything. So, um, I'll lay those out. To keep track of what we're talking about. Um, an awl is basically also a diamond point and the the tip is very sharp and so that's not going to show is it so it's a stitching all and you once you mark your points you can use your stitching all to go through and generally you want to do it at about a 45 degree angle or so and that gets you your nice angled holes diamond shaped holes that are angled about like I said about a 45 degree all the way along and that gets you your nice saddle stitch. The stitching technique comes into play of course but those holes angled precisely are important also and again this pricking iron also does the same thing. So you just put that on there. Take your hammer, give it a whack So there we've got our holes. We got one made by the awl, we got four made by the pricking iron, and they're all angled and they're all diamond shaped. So they look really nice. Hopefully you can see that there. Um, okay, so that's marking your stitching. So again, we had lacing, stitching, stitching all. Um, I use the awl. Uh, probably 75% of the time and the pricking iron 25% of the time. It just depends on the project. Um, sometimes I find thicker things are just tough with the with the pricking iron to get everything just right and I do those one by one by hand. Um, stitching, there's stitching the stitching awls that have the thread in them 
that I don't have anymore. I used to use those. Um, looking at a leather store, you'll quickly see what I what I'm talking about. It has a wooden handle, much like this, and then it's got a needle on the front, and it's got a wheel with the with your uh, string on there, and a, a needle with a hole in it, and you can do a stitch with that. Now that makes a different kind of stitch than nice saddle stitching with needles. So I use needles now, I use two needles and do a saddle stitch. Um, there's plenty of videos online how to do that. I think that's the way to go. It makes a stronger stitch. I did a video on that comparing the two if you want to check that out. Um, you can also use a round awl for holes if you want to. Um, I like the angled holes. It gives a nice finished product. Um, you can also get one of these for or use one of these kind of a scratch all. This one has a point on one end and a round end on the other and it's good for marking up things, um, marking lines. You know, if you're gonna just want to mark a line, you can use that. It makes a faint mark and gives you some reference for your project. Alright, so we got stitching out of the way. We got cutting out of the way. Good hammer. These hammers are available at all kinds of leather supply stores and that kind of thing. They're just a plastic polymer kind of um, thing. Um, it's pretty much what I use for, well you saw me use it for the uh, pricking iron. I use it for punches for making holes and all that kind of stuff. Um, setting snaps with the snap setter which I'm going to show you all this stuff in a second. Um, I use this hammer for, I even use it for tooling and that kind of thing. It's a little heavy for that. I don't do a ton of tooling. If you like to do, if you're going to get into all that fancy carving and tooling and stuff like that, um, and have that be kind of the bread and butter of, of what you do, um, you might want to look at the lighter, like malls and that kind of thing. They have the round ended on them, and uh, the guys seem to like that a lot. <clears throat> I haven't used one, I don't own one. Um, again, I'm just happy with the hammer, I'm fine with that. Uh, hole punches. You're going to need hole punches for a variety of reasons, making holes for lacing and things like that, um, for rivets, for, for snaps, and all that kind of thing. There's two kinds that I like to use. Um, one is you buy the kit and it comes with the different sizes, or you can buy them individually, and the hole punches have their sizes, different sizes. There's these with the screw and tips that basically just change out the tips for different sizes holes. Um, I found these to be pretty inadequate. They don't last very long. These tips are made of a weaker metal and they get dinged up. The edges get, basically the cutting edge gets dinged up pretty easy and it gets much less effective. Um, I still have the ones, some left over, that I use for kind of odds and ends type projects or if I don't have one of these in the size I want. But um, I just buy the kit at Springfield Leather of these. Um, it's got the size marked right on there, 3 16 this one. I have the whole set up, a set of them. There's about five or six in a set. They're pretty cheap at Springfield Leather. And, and they're very durable. I haven't worn out too many of those. And again, that just makes a nice hole. And you're good to go. So you put your snap or whatever through there. Edging. Let's do edging. So you need an edger. Um, there's a couple different styles out there. Um, I've used, there's two different styles basically. One has kind of a concave end on it and the other kind is kind of flat. And it's just got a little blade recessed in there um, that you have to keep sharp. And uh, both of them work fine. I don't have a strong preference either way. But this is something you use to go along your edge. You just take off the corner of the leather and you flip over and do the other side. And that kind of gives you a rounded edge which is preparation for getting a finished edge. So that's the beginning of edging. And then you want a slicker, which I use these typically. Um, so then you just get your, and I've done a video on this too, so there's a video out there on my channel um, on edging. Just go to the playlists and you'll find the playlist about leather work. 
and it has different sizes for different thicknesses of leather so you just get this wet or put your gum tragacant on there or whatever and you start burnishing like crazy and it ends up giving you a nice smooth finished edge it sounds like the neighbors playing again um, alright so that's an uh, edge burnisher or slicker and again you find these at most leather supply stores really common uh, we talked about hammer setting snaps and things and rivets there's the pliers which I've I'm using less and less of and this, these I like these they're the snap setters and there's things that are look similar to this that are for setting rivets and all that kind of thing um, so depending on your needs you just go on a, on website and find the one you know just search for the one you want but the round end of the snap goes in there <clears throat> excuse me and it keeps it from deforming on the, on the pretty edge and then the post that comes through the leather you just put this in the post and give it a little mash with the hammer and you're good to go and then the flat side for the back side of the snap goes on the flat side here and uh, so I like the snap setters like this <clears throat> So this is line 20, and I have line 24 all in one bag now, um, but I use line 24 snaps most of the time. So that's setting snaps. The pliers um, really don't give a satisfactory result, honestly. It's the, the way it splays out the uh, post and everything is not as pretty, and it's not as secure, I think. I mean, it's secure, but it just doesn't give a lot and if you're not careful with these things it can kind of start to bend and mash your project a little bit so yeah I've kind of given up on those um, strap cutting this is a strap cutter it's got a little blade in there you just loosen this up and you set it for whatever thickness of strap you want to it's got a little ruler on there which I found to be pretty accurate and I always double check with my straight edge of course um, and yeah, just tighten down the thumb screw and you put your leather in there and draw it through. This blade needs I need a new blade in this one too. But there you go. And obviously with a strap you draw it all the way through. But that's just for demonstration purposes. So that's for cutting straps if you're doing belts or shoulder bag straps, that kind of thing. I think that one's probably pretty good to get. Um, wool daubers and stuff for putting on your dies and finishes. I like to use these. Um, some finishes I'll use a sponge. Um, dies I use the daubers. It's just convenient and easy. Um, for dyeing some guys just fill up a tank with dye and dunk their project in there and that works great too. Um, it just uses a ton of dye and so I don't do it that way. But um, then I get fine results with these. You can use sponges, whatever makes you happy. Get some rubber gloves, you know, uh, so that way you're not staining and make your hands colored all the time. And learned that lesson a couple times the hard way. <laughs> and gluing, I just use barge cement with the red in the red can. Um, there's others out there, you'll find your preference, but barge cement, it's stuff shoemakers use and everything. It works fine. It's uh, pretty much a go-to glue. Um, I think I did a video on gluing leather too. Pretty sure I did. It's in the leather playlist. So if you want to check that out, please do. Um, so I think that covers it with stitching and you know making your edges right, cutting right, um, being able to mark your stitching lines and that sort of thing. Another way to mark your stitching lines too is to use a divider. So you can set your divider to the width you want. And these are helpful for all kinds of things. But and then you can mark a line that way too. The um the advantage to eventually using the gouge though is it makes that indentation so when you stitch um all your thread ends up being down in that in that little indentation or little crevice. 
so that way it's not getting rubbed on and that kind of thing. So say you make a knife sheath and that thing's rubbing against the um, owner's pants all day. Um, the pants are just going across the leather and not rubbing that stitching and wearing it out. So um, using a groover is um, is a big thing. I would definitely do that. <clears throat> okay, so where to get this stuff? Um, there's obviously a lot more you can buy, but I think starting off with this stuff, you can do your stitching and your modeling and that sort of thing. And uh, didn't really talk about wet forming too much. Sorry for the squeaky chair. And um, I'll do a video on wet forming, but there's a lot of videos out there too. Uh, but I'll do one one of these days. But this will get you started and get you practice and that's the biggest thing is just start doing things and start working on your skills and and getting the basics down to once you get the edging down and the, you get your stitching down and the stitching is looking nice your edging is looking nice your finishes are looking nice um, then you can move on to fancier things um, so where do you get this stuff obviously for needles and things like that I just get them at the supply store um, Springfield leather I use most of the time um, same with daubers, you know, any any kind of expendables, things you use up. Um, Harbor Freight is nice for a lot of cheap stuff too. Not leather specific, but a lot of the utility stuff you're going to use. Um, rulers and blades and things like that. I don't remember where I got the dividers, but it might have been there. Um, so it's a great resource. Uh, the rest of, a lot of the rest of the stuff, some of it I bought new and I also look on things like eBay and Craigslist. Um, eBay, 99 times out of 100, people are going to be asking too much for used stuff, but you're going to run into that those few that are asking really good prices. Um, so sometimes you can get a set of stamps, um, that kind of thing, for really cheap. A lot of um, you know estate type people, people that clean out estates after somebody passed away, sell their stuff on eBay, and um, often they don't know the value of what they have so you can get pretty good deals sometimes so um, a lot of my stamps like when I get things in a kit like I know a lot of these things came together in a kit and uh, like just basically a bundle on eBay and so I got it for a fraction of what it would cost me to buy new so scour eBay um, you know and don't be afraid if you find a kit that's got you know more than half of it's the stuff you want and there's other things you think you might use, use down the line then go for it if it's a good price um, I know this came in that kit also and I there was probably about 20 30 things in that box of just random leatherwork stuff and I've used most of it um, so just a matter of looking for a box full of stuff that you think you're going to use right you don't want to spend money even a good deal on stuff you're not going to use isn't a good deal so um, other than that, you could use Tandy Leather, Springfield Leather. There's a lot of great supply stores out there. Um, Tandy's stuff is for the masses, so if you want like top quality, like this is an Osborne top quality, you might have to go elsewhere. It depends. Um, and then you can go all the way up to guys custom make stamps and stuff to get really the top quality work done. Um, you know, so you're going to have to weigh that out. But for beginning, you don't need that fancy stuff. I'd get like I said, a lot of things used is great. Um, uh, okay, I think that about covers it. Um, yeah, scour Craigslist. You could even go to flea markets and things like that. You know, the guys that just pick up stuff, garage sales and all that. There's a lot of leather working tools laying around out there that are just somebody started a hobby or somebody passed away and they're not being used anymore. And so the deals are out there. So you just got to look around. So keep your eyes out. Um, so that's about it. I think for today. Um, as always, I appreciate you guys watching and uh, leave me comments. Click that like button, please. It really helps. Um, and subscribe, of course, and we'll talk to you soon. Again, thank you very much. Bye. <laughs>